Well, is it too late to save the Indian economy? Joining us tonight, Rajya Sabha MP of the BJP and its National Treasurer, Piyush Goyal. Also with us, political analyst and economist, Paranjay Guha Thakurta. Economist Sajid Chinoy joins us tonight from Mumbai and we will be joined by Abhishek Singhvi of the Congress Party shortly. Let me ask the economist first. Sajid Chinoy, what did you think of the Finance Minister's uh, appeal in Parliament today, in a sense, trying to politically reach out as well, talking about the need uh, for, for reform, for national consensus? Uh, is it too late or did he make sense? Well, it's hard to say whether it's too late, but it's very, very critical. It's very important. Uh, Nadeem Asmith, recognize what's happening to India at the moment. Uh, we're not the only country to suffer this macroeconomic shock. Every emerging market over the last three months has seen their currency under significant pressure. India is down 18%. Brazil is down 17%. Indonesia is down 14%. But we have been by far the worst hit. Uh, and having such a sharp depreciation uh, is going to be extreme, uh, result in extreme adjustment domestically. Um, inflation is going to rise, the fiscal correction becomes harder, significant stress on corporate balance sheets. So this is a very severe shock. It's not of our own making technically. It's happened because of what's happening in the US. But sending out the right signals now, I think, is more important than ever. Uh, what you've seen over the last week is equity flows have begun to leave India, suggesting that they've begun to question India's growth prospects, India's reform prospects. So I think what the finance minister said today is the only thing that needs to be said, that now more than ever before, you need to have a united polity which sends out the right signals globally, that the hard decisions on raising diesel prices, making sure the fiscal correction happens, uh, making sure that the current account deficit is addressed and that India becomes a more attractive place incrementally uh, to foreign investors. Okay. None of this may materialize in the next three, six months, but the signal at this point is very, very crucial. All right. You're saying important signals. Before I come to the politicians, let me ask Paranjoy that are these signals just too late? We're heading into elections. We're heading into polls. Even if you clear infrastructure projects today or you suddenly clear all this backlog of projects, when are you going to implement these decisions? By that time, you will probably have a new government. You know, I completely disagree with the take of the previous speaker. I think the government in general and Mr. Chidambaram in particular remains in a complete state of denial. On the economic front, their biggest failure has been their inability to check inflation in general and food inflation in particular. And to admit that there's a problem. You see, the current account deficit that it widened didn't happen overnight. We may have reached a tipping point. There's been an international problem, so the rupee has collapsed. But the problems that led to the collapse of the rupee, the internal problems, were going on for a very, very long time. You've chosen the last few years, I mean, in the run-up to the election to try and align international energy prices and domestic energy prices. Diesel prices have been allowed to creep up. That's adding to inflation. People are investing in gold because they believe it's a hedge against inflation. And, and you're into the classic vicious cycle, low growth, high inflation, high current account deficit. Why high current account deficit? One of the reasons is you have high imports of gold. Why high imports of gold? Because you have high inflation and you're in that classic cycle. I, I, I'll make two points. You know, I don't think this food bill is, it was, may have been an excuse for the markets collapsing today. But how much more are you going to add to expenditure? Are you going to add about 25,000 crores, 30,000 crores? I mean, I mean that, that's pittance, that's chicken feed compared to the handouts given to the corporate sector each year, which is the over 500,000 crores. In terms of tax exemptions okay. and all, yes. Okay, two points. The finance minister is lamenting, you know, that the Supreme Court, uh, I mean, the Supreme Court has to clear every project, okay? Why did the Supreme Court impose the kind of drastic ban on the exports of iron ore? Because the government of India turned a blind eye to rampant illegal mining that was taking place in Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, not one for four or five years. Why are we importing so much coal? Because you followed a completely non-transparent system of allocating coal so acreages. So the courts had no choice but to intervene. Absolutely. Is, your okay. non-governments, your ineffective governments, your corruption in the system and uh, has, has led you to this mess. And you now want to blame the Supreme Court. You want to blame the CAG. You want to blame Mr. Pranab Mukherjee. I mean, after all, the parliament cleared the finance bill. Okay, you're not ha happy with him because, you know, it was done with retrospective effects. So you want to blame everybody but yourself. But yourself. That's correct. This is a classic state of denial. All right. Piyush Goyal, l l let me just though talk about that issue of political unity and the need for a united polity, which Sajid Chinoy was also talking about. Is it too late for that, especially as we head into campaigns and, 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 and elections? Uh, you know, you heard Mr. Chidamaram saying, you don't have to agree with me, support me. 
Well, uh, the biggest problem of this government has been is their sincerity. They have, in over the last few years, lost the confidence of the opposition because it's very selective approach. When they want to play politics on a certain thing, like take the case of the food bill, where there was a general sense that there should have been more consultation, chief ministers should have been taken on board, especially in a federal structure where most of this has to happen through the states. We have written to the government about certain objections in reducing the BPL family's entitlement from 7 kilo per person to 5 kilos, which is going to be drastic and pretty, pretty severe consequences on the poor of the nation. When it suits them, they break the consensus rule, that's the multi-brand retail. And when it suits them, they blame it on the opposition that we cannot get this thing done. So the problem with this government, which was not there earlier, when Mr. Vajpayee was Prime Minister, he believed in a policy of consensus. After all, we also did not have a majority in the Rajya Sabha in the NDA times. But we were able to get everything done. The maximum reform in India happened under Mr. Vajpayee because he genuinely took opposition on board. So when we wanted to do insurance 49% and the standing committee chairman Murli Devra under instructions of Mr. Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi insisted it should be retained at 26%, Vajpayee and Yashwan Sinha readily agreed in the wider interest of a consensus. So Mr. Chidambaram doesn't come with clean hands. He speaks in a double folk tongue. And that is where he loses the confidence of the opposition or his efforts to build a consensus fail. Well, so me... really the failure of the government is, okay. is in Bharosa, not only of the people but also of the opposition.